okay, today we shall be looking at an aspect of the comprehension you know, called the figures of speech. Figures of speech is very important in answering English language comprehension. Now, what are the figures of speech? The figures of speech are words, a word that we use to decorate our statements. In other words, it is a deliberate shift from the normal way of speaking or writing. The way we speak or the way we write can be in lexical meaning or in figurative meaning. When you, say, you are saying words in lexical meaning, you, you are saying the exact meaning of something. But when you are saying something figuratively, it means you are saying it indirectly. Now, what are the examples of figures of speech that we can have? Now, you can, you can have simile. Simile is a very important figure of speech. It is the first and foremost figure of speech every person should know in English. What does it mean? It is, it is a form of comparison between two things. Using like or as. You are comparing two things. You are using like or as. Those two things you are comparing, you are using like or as. For instance, the, the girl is as beautiful as the rainbow. The girl is as beautiful as the rainbow. That is a simile. The girl is as beautiful. Is as beautiful as the rainbow. As the rainbow. Now, we can like the as. Now, this expression captures as beautiful as the rainbow. We are comparing what and what? The girl and the rainbow. So those two, two things must be compared. The girl, the rainbow, meaning us and us. They can also compare using like. Very important. I say she behaves like a parasite. She behaves like a parasite. She behaves like a parasite. She behaves like you're comparing a girl to a parasite. <clears throat> she behaves like a parasite. In simile, something is not exactly that thing, but like that thing. Not that thing per se, but like that thing. What is even parasite? Parasite that obvious thing that feeds on the host. Parasite in effect depends on someone to end the living. That person depends on someone so much that the person cannot do without that person. That means that person depending on that particular thing for a living is not a parasite. So the person behaves like, or not a parasite, but like that parasite. So that's all for me. Now we can have metaphor. Metaphor. Metaphor is another thing of speech that looks like simile, but it's not simile. In simile, we are comparing two things using like or as. But metaphor, we are comparing two things, but without using like or as. Very important, it's the opposite of simile. Without using like or as. Without using like or as. Not on a line without. So, it's the direct opposite. In, in, in other words, we are comparing directly. 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 For instance, how can we put this? Uh, how can we put the example one of simile to metaphor? You can say the girl is, although we can't say the girl is a rainbow, we can say. The girl is a parasite. You can say she's a parasite in my life. She's a parasite in my life. Parasite in my life. Probably it's like a particular thing. She is a parasite 
Now you are comparing the girl, a woman being a female to a parasite, without using life, without using ass. It means you are from, you see, that you are saying that girl is the parasite directly. Not like a parasite, but that parasite. So you are comparing two things without using life or ass directly. So that's what we call metaphor. You can say that statement is metaphorical. Metaphorical statement. Another example of metaphor that you can say Binga is a lion. Binga is a lion. Binga is a lion. The next thing I was trying to say is that Binga is very brain. Everybody that is a lion, this person has a brain heart. Not like a lion. Binga is like a lion, but Binga is that lion. I'm comparing the person to a lion directly. Directly. Without using life or us. Another because we can have is personification. 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 Now look at this word. Personification. It derived from the word person. Personify. Person. What are we trying to say? We are giving life to lifeless things. We are personifying things by giving them life. I mean, other things, lifeless things, things that have, don't have life. We are giving the human person to them. We are making them look like like person. How? You can say the cloud is pregnant. The cloud is pregnant. The cloud. Is pregnant. Is personification. How? Because here we are personifying cloud. Cloud is a lifeless thing. Doesn't have life. It can't breathe. It can't. Those who can have life, you can call them uh, Mr. Niger D. All those things, Mr. Niger D. Is a formula in biology that they give life. Mr. Niger D. They must move. Every living thing must move. Movement. Our, they must what? Res respire. They have this respiratory system. They have to breathe. Very important. And they have to what? Most times, they have to, they have got nutrition. They have to eat. Nutrition. Irritability. They have to, to, have that uh, ability to respond to the environment, adaptability. Then G, they have to grow. Everything that's, that serves as non-living thing, they have to grow. E, they have to ex ex excrete. They have to be releasing. As you are eating, you should be releasing. Excretion. You have to excrete. Then R, you have to respond to situations in the environment, response to the situation in the environment. Then D, you have to develop, develop it, part of human beings. But cloud is lifeless. It has none of these features. Now, pregnant is for human being. The cloud cannot be pregnant. But people use cloud pregnant when it's about to rain. They then they now use that personified cloud. The cloud is pregnant. So that's more for personification. An example of personification is what? Like in the Bible, they will tell you, death came to my house. Death came to her house and passed by. Death came to her house and passed by. And passed by. The main mention of this statement brings to the mind that death is not a human being that is passing by. Death came. Death is not personified like a walking person. So for you to personify death is what? Personification. Personification. So that's another uh, 
way of personification. Therefore, you can have a figure of speech called hyperbole. Hyperbole. For your hyperbole, people call it exaggeration. Exaggeration. Hyperbole just means exaggeration. What does it actually mean? You are saying something beyond what it actually is. Saying something beyond what it actually is. For instance, in a particular wedding, you observe that many people attended the wedding. Instead of saying many people attended the wedding, you end up saying one million people attended the wedding. One million. You want to please people to exaggerate a situation. One million people attended my wedding. It is wrong. That one, one million people. One million people attended my wedding. Attended my wedding. One million people attended my wedding is an exaggerated statement. Even in a country of Nigeria that will have over 400 million people. What, are you saying that one million people attended the wedding? Even if uh, the, the wedding of of the president, one of the people is, is really a tense event. That's hyperbole. Another of hyperbole, you can have a son saying she drank a barrel, she drank a drum of water last night. She drank a drum of water last night. She drank a barrel or a drum. A drum. She drank a drum of water last night. You know what I'm saying? The girl drank a lot of water. You didn't just know how to put it to the person you are talking to. Now you are saying the girl drank a drum of water. A drum. Nobody how nobody can drink even half a drum of water, no matter how tasty. No matter even that person has passed as of that the fast for seven days. The person cannot exhaust a drop of you don't have a drop of water. Let them know a drop of water. So in, in a way, in a bid to please people, people tend to go beyond minds, go out of their way and exaggerate a statement, which is not supposed to be so. Very long expression. Then we have another figure of speech. Excuse me. This that came to her house and passed by. And passed by. That by is it B Y or B Y E? It's B Y. Okay. Passed by. Okay. B Y E is a form of like goodbye. That was why you are saying goodbye. That's why you have B Y E. Goodbye. Goodbye or bye bye. Or goodbye is formal. So, very important to so pass by. Very good question. For a lot of students, we end up writing why It would be mean or nothing. But there are variants in English. For that another topic, topic is called commonly misused words. By, by. But probably as time goes on, I get to do that. Now five. The next figure of speech you can have is alliteration. 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 Now what we call alliteration? It's just a figure of speech where you have repetition of consonant sound. Repetition of consonant sound. Consonant sound. At the beginning. At the beginning of words in a line. At the beginning of words. Of words. At the beginning of words. At the beginning. This is a character, it means that something has been 
something is written that you meet them, but now you had it, be upside down. You need to know that something is there that has been written. So when you repeat consonant sounds, you repeat consonant sounds. At the beginning of every word is an alliteration. Now let me give you an example of an alliteration. Sing a song of six pens. Sing a song of what? Six pens. Now how is this an alliteration? You are repeating S, S, S at the beginning of the word. Now this is a consonant sound. Although in all English, we call vowel sound are R, A, E, O. But consonant sound are those sounds that are not A, E, I, O, U. Vowel sounds are A, E, I, A, E, I, O, U. Vowel sound. Vowel sound. Vowel letters. So every letter that are not A, I, O, U, they are called consonant sound. So S is not part of it. S, consonant sound is S. Other words like B, uh, D, F, J, K, L, M, P, Q, R, S, T, W, S, Y, Z. They are all consonant sound. That's why when you repeat this consonant sound at the beginning of words, that's our alliteration. The popular alliteration is this one. It says, the plantain planter, the very common alliteration. The plantain planter, planted plantain, planted plantain. And look at this beginning. The plantain planter, P, is what? The alliterative word here, P. They are moving with P, the plantain planter. Planted plantain. Where? On its plantain plantation. On its plantain plantation. Plantation. Now see how we, are, we keep repeating the consonant sound. That P, plantain planter. Planted plantain on its plantain plantation. There are many ways that you can be repeating, and it's correct. Someone also says, Father Francis fried five fish for five friends in France. It's also correct. F, 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 F. F is part of the consonant sound. Someone also says, uh, Money, uh, Money made Madam Lily, Mary Madman. M, 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 M. So there are a lot of People just uh, begin to reason with the repetition of these consonant sounds. Okay? We still have some more. So, these ones are the important ones. But more figures of speech are also important. More figures of speech. We can have oxymoron. Oxymoron starts from our six. Oxymoron. What do you call oxymoron? It's just a figure of speech. You can call it just say two opposite words. Two opposite words side by side. You put two opposite words side by side. When you are, it's like sitting down with an enemy. Two opposite things. Black, white, sitting, staying side by side, no space. What would the example? On our life is bittersweet. Life is what? Bittersweet. Bitter, at the same time, sweet. And it's correct. Some will just tell you, my friend, look, this life is bittersweet. And it's correct. That means, it sometimes you may, you may undergo suffering, and sometimes you undergo joy. 
So even in the Bible, they tell you there's time for everything. The life to be done. And number two. Now, someone may say she is a wise fool. She is a wise fool. Well, a wise fool. Now, most times when you use the negative word together with the positive word, you are emphasizing that negative word. See, that boy is a wise fool. That man, that woman is a wise fool. They mean the person, the person appears to be wise, but is actually foolish. It's a wise thing. There are many forms of oxymoron. So I will say, the, uh, the woman's delivery was a painful laughter. Was a painful laughter. So the first time I said this statement, a girl looked at me and she smiled. She now really did it. Because the woman was on her whole pain. Then later, when she had given birth, she will become joyful. She will start being happy. She will be excited. So a woman delivery is a painful laughter. Painful laughter. A painful laughter. So there are, there are, there are many forms of oxymoron. Oxymoronic statements that a lot of people can use. But it should be two opposite when lying side by side. Now, before we go to the end, then look at paradox. Paradox. Paradox is common with journalism in newspapers and magazines. In the kind of people speak where a statement appears foolish. A statement appears foolish. A statement appears foolish. Yes. When somebody says a particular thing, it will appear foolish at first. It will appear foolish at first. But when you take a second look, and when you have a rethink about that statement, that statement will bring out the truth. The hidden truth in that statement. Statement will just appear stupid, will appear absurd, will appear nonsensical. But when you take a second look at what that person has said, there is truth. In fact, the hidden truth, the real truth in that statement. Because as when you take a second look, a second thought, you have a second thought at that statement. It will bring out the truth. Only when you have the second thought, you have the thing about the thing, the truth. For instance, I look at the thing. Example one: the child is the father of the man. The child is the father of the man. Is the father of the man. But but look at this statement. It's, it appears foolish. How can the child now be his own father? How? But let this is this is the hidden truth in this statement. It means when the child must have grown, he will not be the one to take care of his own father. Now, this is the hidden truth about the child is actually the father of the man. And that is the main reason every parents are training their children to go to school. Else, what am I training my son to go to school or my daughter to go to school for? So there is no point wasting my resources. But this is the hidden truth. Because people are growing old. The child will eventually take care of the parents. And when the parents must have grown old and tired, and retired from active service, from the service working, working, and working. So what am that? And that's from a paradox we can have. Is that water is everywhere. Water is everywhere. But there is no water to drink. But there is no water to drink. And people will just say, how is it possible? That water will be everywhere, but there is no water to drink. It's a paradox. For the Nigerian situation is a paradox. Water is, Nigeria has water through the dam 
water can through the rivers, we can generate water. But go to get water on the streets, they will tell you there is no water. People trek as far as in, in distant places to get common water. Bottle water, everything is not expensive, but we we'll have water. Sachet water, like people call pure water, is not expensive. So how now can we explain that water is everywhere? So it's really paradoxical. Paradoxical. A statement appears foolish. It appears foolish. You water is everywhere, but you can't get water. For instance, if that produces oil, fuel, steel, fuel is on the high side. We produce fuel. We will supply fuel to neighboring countries, but we can't get fuel to fuel our, our, our tanks. We may see a paradox. So, take note of what a paradox. Now, we have irony. Irony looks like paradox. In a figure of speech in which we say something but meet another thing. You are saying one thing now. You are saying one thing. What means another? What means another? You are saying one thing, but means another thing. Wow. How is it possible? Somebody is waiting. Example one. I am sweating. Okay, I am sweating. Come on, please. Put on the fire. Put on the fire for me. I am sweating. Please put on the fire for me. Veronica. Veronica. You are sweating. Instead of going to the place where you can have ventilation or fresh air, you are advisable, please, that you need something that will be hot around. A hot situation. Put on the fire anywhere for me. You are sweating. Veronica. Veronica. So, Veronica. The ninth one will say, if you feel easy, Euphemism. What does it mean? The figure of speech in which we say we say harsh things. We say harsh or unpleasant things. Unpleasant things. In a pleasant way. In a pleasant way. How? What does it mean to say harsh or pleasant things? When well, I say harsh, it's something that is not pleasing to the ear. When somebody hears it, the person will be annoyed. You are putting it in a way that will be pleasant. For example, instead of saying, example one, the, the man, the man has gone to.